And if I had an honest church, there's a lot of us that don't really feel like we used to feel. Lost our pant, lost our desire. Just feel like I'm out of place. And, and, and especially when things don't happen on the time that you have expected them to happen, uh, it becomes difficult to look at this thing and say, you know, you know I don't really want, I don't want to seem less spiritual than the rest of y'all, but there's sometimes I don't feel like it. Well, where my honest church at? Where my honest church at? I, I know the Lord did this, I know he did that, and I know I'm supposed to do this and I'm supposed to do that, but the honest people who don't always dot every I or cross every T will say, some days I don't feel like it. I don't feel like being nice to nasty folks. I know that's what the book says, but but you know, I, I've been slapped enough. I don't feel like turning up cheap. I wish I had one person. And so uh, I stopped by here on my way to heaven to tell you that the only way to get through is to go through. Let me preach, tell somebody the only way to get through is to go through. Been kind enough to allow us to be alive and well on the 24th day in January 2016. And I, I remember anything beyond 1999 was frightening to us. You know, we all packed in churches. So the kid, well, I had to, I was going to take us out. We we're going to have no, no, no heat, no electricity, no water. I mean, people were lined up around the church. They got water and generators. And here we are, 16 years later. Because man may say one thing, but God's got this thing in his hand. And, and he knows when he's going to do what he's going to do. And so we've got to endure what we're going to do. Uh, let, let me run through this because I've got a lot to say and I don't want to hold you hostage. But uh, 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 Peter says something. He said, now, now remind them. He said, be, be strong because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And if the enemy hasn't bothered you, it means you have not bothered him. <laughs> Revelation on day number five uh, of this fast, uh, and, 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 and get this if you can, there are three areas where the, where the enemy uh, comes at you in every season of your life. Three areas, I'm just talking. Three areas. Uh, number one, he clutters your mind. Somebody help me preach, tell somebody, he'll mess up your mind. Uh, because he knows that if he can keep you frustrated, he'll keep you from doing uh, God's will, he'll keep you from going. And, and when the mind is cluttered, very few days go without depression. Very few seasons without discouragement. Very, very few, very few see without some times of being disillusioned. So it frustrates our mind. Mind is the battleground. And so when something on your mind a long time and clutters your mind, you do not have a mind to do what you ought to do. Uh, I think I got two, three people. You can be under so much pressure uh -uh, and your, your mind be so messed up, you forget stuff. <laughs> Stress is real, y'all on to Just said, if I could just get the Lord to clear my mind. No one of those bottles of water was for clear focus, because when your mind is messed up, it, it's cluttered, and, and it messes you up. So the first area is he'll, he'll, he'll clutter your mind. The second piece of his attack is that he will complicate the process. Help me preach. Tell, tell your neighbors, it ain't that complicated. You know, walking with the Lord, walking with the Lord ain't as complicated as some people make it, but people add their man-made rules and, and they, 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 want to, they want to spiritualize every moment and, and, and we want big words for everything. You know, we, uh, uh, 30 years ago, we didn't know nothing about intercessory. That was a new word. We knew prayer band. Prayer meeting. Somebody pray for me. So, you know, we complicate the process, and in doing so, we push some people out because our terms are not regular or reachable. Complicate the process. So, a lot of people don't think they can be saved, don't think they can live saved. 
we complicate the process. Jesus said, you know, uh, if, if, if you believe in me, the scripture said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And Paul turned around and said, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then we messed it up by saying, you ain't saved unless you wear some kind of clothes. You ain't saved unless you get baptized a certain kind of way. You ain't saved. Okay. So the process has been complicated. And a lot of people will be lost because we threw at them what we thought salvation was. But I'm so glad that he saved me in a simple way. That all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh -huh. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, but the God of all grace. Okay, so don't, don't complicate the process. Uh, and, and, and let me throw this out here since I'm here. Uh, you can't, uh, but you can't abort the process. Don't, don't complicate it, but you can't abort it. Uh, process is crucial in any successful thing of your life. Okay, let me simplify it. Uh, you want to cook chitlins. You don't go get the chitlins and just put them in the pot.
Oh, have mercy. Ask somebody, say, what, what messed you up? If, uh, people went after the wrong people, going after the wrong stuff, and I left to swing. Because some other things are enticing to me. Can I tell you, since you're the mature church, that the devil knows exactly how you like it. I wish I could preach it. He's not going to tempt you with tall, dark, and handsome if you're attracted to short, stubby, and yellow. But if you go after the wrong stuff, and after it, and, and involve the wrong people, you get off your square and on your swing. Uh, I, I said this the other night. People come into your life uh, for one or two reasons, and, 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 and this may hurt. Uh, some people came in your life and they're there now because they really love you. They're really into you. And then there's another group uh, that are there because they want your stuff. Sometimes people will align themselves with you to get what you got. To use your influence. Y'all ain't hearing me talk. They are around as long as you can give to them. But when you cannot give to them, they scatter themselves. Y'all don't hear me talk. What happened? what happened to all the people that were with you when you was up? You stopped feeding them? No, the problem that I were in, uh, in uh, Ohio for Bishop Ross's uh, uh, retirement on this week. And, and one of the revelations, I thought it was just a great thing. He said, you know, all the people that were around you this season of your life? He said, it's like this. He said, cat, the cat said, if I, if I feed them, uh, they keep coming. The raccoons, if I feed them, they keep coming. The possums, if I feed them, they keep coming. But, but stop feeding them. I don't know who I'm talking to now. Stop feeding them and see if they show up. People will change on you when you can't do what you used to do for them. I'm preaching. They, they, they'll get funny on you. As long, as long as you give it, they're all right. But when it comes their time to give, they ain't around. But when we go after the wrong thing, we tend to stay too long. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. Cost you more than you want to pay. Uh, we can really go ahead. God gave us the swing, but we ran into some other stuff. And so... I had to get back to the swing. The other stuff was messing me up. And, 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 and I might not holler like I plan to. Uh, I, I got another Sunday to holler. But I, I don't want us to end up this year in that syndrome or in that group of people uh, that should be further ahead, but we're stuck because we went after the wrong thing. Ask the person next to you, see what you're going after. Yeah, come on, ask the page 2016. What, what are you going after? Or, or, or put it like this. What is it that you don't need to go after that you went after before? <laughs> what else got us off, uh, got us off uh, on our swing? Uh, you get off Watching or listening to other folks. You know, there, there's sometimes that there's a time when you get wisdom from people and they give good advice, but most of the time, people ain't gonna help you with too much of their words. Because we live in a time of the selfish. And so we get our swing, uh, listen to what other people say. So if they mad, you mad. If they not going, you not. If they don't do it, you don't. And, and, and there's a danger in this because, you know, and I told this once in a couple's retreat, it, it, you know, one, one couple was going through this and this, that, and the other, and, and, the, and the husband and wife were having some, some perplexities. This, this lady goes out with her girlfriends, and she tells them, okay, I got to be back home at 3 o'clock because we're going to have one car, the husband needs a car, and on and on. And the girlfriend says to her, Girl, I ain't gonna be controlled like that. And 
You just might as well stay out here and kick it with us. Well, when the question was asked, where your husband? Teamwork. It just makes sense if there's only one car, then everybody got their time with it. And what works for you in your marriage and family, it may not be the same thing as somebody else. Agreements are different. But when you listen to people's advice, how do single people tell married people what to do? How you ain't got no husband, no wife, and you're going to advise somebody else? How you ain't never raised a child, work with a child, taught something to school, went to vacation Bible school, going to rebuke me about my children? Somebody say glory to God. Glory. I'm so glad that the Lord does not does not uh, does not allow us to get caught up in the clutches of, of, uh, of listening to what other people say. You know, some of us wouldn't be at the point we are now uh, 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 in, in God if we had listened to somebody else or in life because people have small mindedness and they will throw their small stuff on you. All right, what else got me off? I got off. You get off when you ignore what God told you. Help me preach. Tell the person next to you, whatever God says is what's important. Oh, yeah, you say, say whatever God says is what's important. When God tells you something and you don't listen, you get out of the swing, off your square, and you have no more help. How did I get out of here? How did I get out of here? You ignore what I told you. I tried to share it with somebody. It wasn't for them. Here's what I came to tell you. Tell somebody you get back in the swing. Yeah. The, the thing I like about New Year's, the thing I like about uh, about uh, uh, New Week, Sunday is the beginning of the week, and I believe that's why the Lord allows Christians to assemble on Sunday to get their direction for the week. And you know, people that don't assemble, they're missing out on what God was saying. So we've got four Sundays, five Sundays. You ought to be in church four Sundays, five Sundays. And don't let people take you away from the first date that sets the tone for the for okay. Okay, so you. you. You're not down south. We don't go to church first and third, second and fourth. The Lord gives us seven days. We supposed to give him one back. And we have a, a problem with three hours a week out of 168. Hmm. So how, 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 how do you get back in the swing? I got three points in my mouth. The first thing, and this really helped me, was, can I be honest, Guyton? I don't care who you are. We all have some off days. <laughs> to save, to sanctify, the call. I, was, I, I got frustrated thinking about it. How many times I have gotten out of the swing and I'm the preacher, leader, but I have days when stuff and things have taken me from running. So, so the first way, the first thing I do to get back in the swing, I'm swinging, just let me swing it. You got to get a better understanding and a deeper relationship. Say with me, better understanding, deeper relationship. The Bible here talks about, they say, and I'm going to give you uh, feet like hands feet. Feet like hands feet, like the feet of a deer. And, and, and when you look, at, uh, you look at the text and you understand that the hands feet of the deer was that of a, a white-tailed deer. The King James calls it the heart. But his feet are unusual. Several things about the feet of, of this deer, this heart, the white deer. White-tailed deer. First of all, he's pitched in a forward direction. When you get a better understanding of your relationship and your time and your stuff with God, God will pitch you in a direction that only you should go. Don't let nobody pitch you in the wrong direction. So that deer, before he run, runs, he's already pitched. He knows where he's going. Secondly, secondly, that deer, uh, that deer is designed for high places. Somebody say, no low place for me. He, he's designed for high places. And a lot of the deer cannot jump to high places. I hope I help somebody. But there are some of us that are called to jump higher than everybody else. I'm 
designed for the high place. Say it with me, I'm designed for the high place. Hands, feet are those that are designed for the high place. Hands, feet are those that are pitched and in a forward direction. Hands, feet are those that are constructed for great speed. So why would I want somebody else to hold me down? Well, Lord, sir, I got you. I, I designed you for high places. Um, I got out to swing because other people around me, they didn't want to go to high places. Check your circle out. How many folk in your circle that are scared of high places? They love the normal. They love the regular. They love the easy to get to. But when you start talking deeper relationship, I don't want to deeper. I didn't want to be the large pad go on. No, deeper, I did on in the 23rd Psalm. I need to know all that sentence we there. Deeper relationship takes us beyond our surface. Um, I want a better understanding and a deeper relationship. I'll be 59 in a couple of months. I've been walking with the Lord a long time, been preaching this gospel for 40 years, been pastoring this church. Uh, it'll be 35 years. Amen. And, and at the same time, I still need to go deeper. Because once you're content, Ain't no going back. Ernie, your dad taught me this at the Allen Studio of studio Music on 55th and State. I had money uh, for lessons with, uh, back then with Lionel, uh, Lionel Healy. And my mama helped me get an organ, and it came with four lessons. And so I found out Professor Allen, that's Ernie's daddy, uh, was on State Street back then, and he gave lessons to people who couldn't read music. They learned the chords. And I never forget something. Young people, please get this. And y'all that still have vision, please get this. Professor Allen said to me, if you become content with the new, these four chord changes, you'll never be a good musician. You'll catch that later. When, when you become content and say, I'm already grown in God, so I don't need to pray. I don't need to fast. Uh-oh. I don't need to go on the, the, the consecration, just go on and eat. No, when you become content and say, ain't nothing else for me and God, then you have already pushed yourself out of the swing, off the square, and you're like saying, okay, ain't, ain't no more growth for me. Let me tell you, I don't care how old you are in God. You can still grow some more, learn some more. Lord have this. Somebody say, constantly learn. Get a better understanding and a deeper relationship. Uh, a better understanding, deeper relationship. Here I am, 40 years of preaching, still need a better understanding, deeper relationship. I don't want to be stuck in four chords if God says there are many more. It's like, it's like uh, only knowing one way to travel. Yeah, it's going to go. Ain't, ain't but one way. I ain't going to call his name. But one of the eagles was taking me home. And, uh, and the traffic was everywhere. And he just going cross 87, cross 87, cross 87. I said, don't you know there's a Dan Ryan? <laughs> don't you know there's a Lakeshore Drive? <laughs> uh, just sitting in the traffic. I, I won't be stuck in traffic if there's an alternative route. <laughs> but if you're stuck and there's only one way to get there, you might not get there. Somebody said deeper relationship. Uh, the second thing. Uh, that will get you back on, on your square, back in the swing, is you got to keep the atmosphere charged. Keep the atmosphere charged. I, I started talking about this last week, and you got to feel the atmosphere. If you want something, you got to put it in the atmosphere. Because the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. And so if you don't speak it, you're not going to get it. So you put it in the atmosphere. I am the head and not the tail. I am the lender and not the bar. I am above and not beneath. I can have whatever God says I can have. I can go wherever God says I can go. I can do whatever God says I can do. I charge the atmosphere. I charge it. I have five arms. I take notes to make my gift these. I charge the atmosphere uh, with five things on, on this week. Uh, and the first one is, and this may be for somebody else, please know 
that you're, where you are now is not where you're going to end. Know where I am now, not where I'm going to be. Say it with me. If it's up to, if it is to be, it's up to me. So wherever you are now, you can't be content with being there. You got to, you got to feel the atmosphere with where you're going. Then secondly, I dealt with something that really uh, exhausts uh, many of us. You got to stop sweating the small stuff. You, you cannot allow small people, minor people, to run your major life. get back to it on Tuesday. Then you got to have purpose in everything that you do. Somebody say purpose. purpose. So I got I to I know that where I am now is not where I'm going to be. I can't sweat the small stuff. I got to have purpose in everything I do. Uh, the fourth one that I've been challenged with is don't be overworked with stuff that ain't your assignment. But if I spend all my energy with something that ain't my assignment, then I won't be able to get back and do what I'm supposed to do because I'm exhausted, I'm tired, man. I've been doing stuff that I wasn't called to. Every, every fight is not your fight. I know you're the radical. I know you got the Holy Ghost. Y'all sleep? Talk to somebody and say, don't, don't be overworked. If we spend all our time with the wrong stuff, then the right stuff is going to fail. Here's another one. Be amazing at what you do. Don't settle for mediocre. Uh, one of the things I, I, I love about Duchess, I don't know much about it, but one of the things I love about, about the Vonsi, if y'all don't know, know this, whatever she do, she's going to be 120% in it. If you don't want to sing, don't give her the mic. And she'll sing from the front of the church to the back of the church. Just somebody get up and say, Lord, I want to thank you. And I don't know if they're being the praise, but I'm tired of that woman sitting on the roof, and Gary, and they're trying to ordain the peoples. That's a good example. The peoples, people are the people. They're trying to ordain the people. And the Vanja was singing. We had, been, we had four services that day. I said, Where'd she get the energy from? She just sang and sang. And so they wouldn't move the chair as she sang and moved the chair, moved the people's furniture. Because what she had was her golden mind. Her end in mind was, I got to do what I'm called to do. And I have to make this amazing. So people can say, it's amazing that she got the energy from it. It's amazing. The poor preachers be coming and the little staff around here be saying, uh, uh, for years they always say to me, they say, you're not normal. So you don't sleep, you strain, you know, because when you got vision and stuff, you just go, go, go. It's, it's amazing. I went to Bishop Ross this week, I don't know if any of y'all remember this, and Bishop Ross at the church came, he's 77, he's 50 years of pastor, and he's retiring, and when I kicked off the retirement celebration, and uh, Bishop Ross said to me, he came in one time, and the choir was here, the church was here, two bus loads, and uh, I called him at the hotel. I said, Bishop Ross, uh, well, they'll be there to pick you up at uh, quarter to seven. You preach 7.30, uh, then 9.30, 30, and we'll go out and eat, and you come to preach the broadcast at six. I said, you lost your damn mind. <laughs> he said, I'll be there at 11 o'clock. As you got preach, he said, you may be wired for that. <laughs> and we're going to pray for you. We're going to put you on the head of the list. <laughs> I'm staying in the hotel, in the bed, to 10, I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know he didn't come? <laughs> he didn't come. Uh, don't be bent out of shape because somebody else are wired differently than you. But whatever you're wired to do, you do that. And be amazing at it. Brother back down and said, we did all that, four services on Sunday, one church, two locations, I got on planes, went across the world. It had to be a grace on me. Yes. Stuff will break if it ain't your assignment, if you're not grace for it, if you're not anointed for it, don't try to do what somebody else does. It won't work. 
So you got to do what you do in your area of grace. And when the grace lifted, I said, we're going to one church. When the grace lifted, we went from, to, from four services to three services. Now we have two. Glory to God.
get back in the swing. And they think they took you out. So you're still swinging. It did hurt a little bit. But I'm, I'm back in the swing. I went through what I had to go through, but I'm back in my swing. Went through, we went through a gap what we had to deal with, but we're back in our swing. Don't let me swing too fast and too high, because I'll jump up that way. Back in the swing. When you get back in the swing, then God can take you, elevate you, and push you to the place where he wants you to go. If you got to get God in here, come things and does things to us, allows us to experience certain things. But at the end of the day, he wants us to get back in place. Oh, yeah. The place that he has designed for us. And my prayer is that as we refocus, we readjust, and God quenches our thirst, that we'll get back in place. But you don't let somebody else do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. We were born with a purpose. Get back into it. And when you get back into it, the Lord will applaud you or move and prepare you for promotion. Amen. Amen. We extend the invitation. There may be somebody here today.